Mugabe affirms there is a public decision to nominate President al-Assad to the presidency. Al-Muqdad and Zarif affirm that Geneva 2 priority must be to combat terrorism and stop the support for the terrorist Takfiri gangs. The tribes' gatherings in Syria stress they are only represented by the Syrian government's delegation to Geneva too. The Iraqi armed forces continue their operations to pursue terrorists in various areas, particularly in Al-Ambar. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our news for today. In a press conference, Minister of Information Omran Zorbi asserted that Syria is keen to make the international conference in Geneva on resolving the crisis in Syria a success in order to achieve the aspirations of the Syrian people, emphasizing that there is a public decision to nominate President Bashar al-Assad for the presidency. As Zorbi stressed that the armed groups that exist in Syria under different names are all terrorist groups and all their attempts to show themselves uh, as moderate will not deceive the Syrian people. Azabi added that the terrorists who attacked in federal Russia are the same, holding the same political and financial identity as those who commit crimes in Syria and Iraq, asserting that it is the right of all Syrians, Iraqis and Russians to defend their national security. Azabi stressed that the state which commits terrorism in the world is well known. It must be held accountable and must pay the price. The information minister added that we understand very well that in the future there will be an expanded government in Syria, but there will not be a transitional ruling body, as was the case in Iraq during the U.S. invasion, underlining that any agreement in Geneva, if not approved by the Syrian people in a referendum, then it will be meaningless of no value and surely cannot be implemented. As Rabbi said, anyone will be under illusion to believe he can change things on the ground by sending terrorists and weapons to Syria, Mr. Zabi added. The Turkish government, he stressed, should fully close its borders in the face of the terrorists, expel them from its territories and stop the logistic and financial support for them. There are huge infiltration attempts from Jordan into Syria, Mr. Zabi went on and the Jordanian government should control the borders and refrain from succumbing to foreign, particularly Saudi dictates. Deputy Foreign and Expatriates Minister Faisal Maqdad has discussed with Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Jawad Zarif in Tehran the relations between the two countries and the developments related to the Convention of the International Conference on Syria, Geneva II, as well as bilateral coordination and the situation on the regional and international arenas. The two sides stressed that the priority of Geneva II Conference should be to combat terrorism and stop the financial and military support to the terrorist Takfiri gangs through pressuring the states that support them. The two sides warned against the danger of the criminal acts perpetrated by the terrorist gangs in Syria on the safety and stability of the region. They called for combining regional and international efforts to fight and uproot terrorism. al maqdad said Syria will take part in Geneva too, stressing the need to provide all the ingredients of its success. Dr. Maqdad referred to the importance of Iran's participation in Geneva too without preconditions in view of its major role in solving regional and international questions. On his part, Zarif stressed the need to combine efforts to combat the terrorism in Syria, which threatens the country as well as the security and stability of the region. He said the solution in Syria is only political through dialogue among the Syrians themselves without foreign intervention. Zarif stressed the Iranian government's continued support for the Syrian people's steadfastness. Within the same context, Dr. Maqdad and the Assistant Foreign Minister for Arab and African Affairs, Hussein Amir Abdullahian, also discussed the preparation for the Convention of Geneva II in a manner that serves the Syrian people's interests, sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity. 
Iranian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Mordia Afkham has affirmed her country's rejection of any preconditions for its participation in the International Conference on Syria Geneva II and of any proposal that infringes on its pride and dignity. In its weekly press conference today, Afkham said Iran was ready to take part in Geneva II to find a political solution to the crisis in Syria. She reiterated her country's call for solving the crisis through inter-Syrian dialogue in which all the Syrian people take part in deciding their future. Afkham referred to the emphasis laid by various state and figures on Iran's role in solving the crisis, pointing out that during the recent visit paid to Turkey by the Iranian foreign minister, the Turkish officials underlined Iran's role in solving the crisis politically. The Iranian foreign ministry spokeswoman said, if what is wanted is only the convention of Geneva II, then it will turn into a mere political parade and will not come out with solid permanent results. The Syrian clans gathering has stressed that the tribes grant the delegation formed by the Syrian government to the International Conference Geneva II the rightful and popular authorization to represent them at the conference, affirming that no one abroad is entitled to represent them. In a press conference held at Damaro's Hotel in Damascus, the Syrian clans gathering said the tribes have held on to their national stand during the crisis. The gathering said it grants the delegation formed by the Syrian government the right and popular authorization to represent them. If the tribes are wanted to be represented with a delegation, then such representation will not be through people abroad, because those people represent no one but themselves, and they certainly do not represent the clans and tribes inside Syria, the gathering stressed. In its statement, the gathering pointed out that those who shed Syrian blood and cooperated with the terrorist groups are not considered by the tribes as representatives of the Syrian people at the conference. The gathering added that there are many figures and sites abroad who have alleged to represent the tribes and who have been sponsored by pro-terrorism states in order to claim to be representatives of the Syrian tribes, whether within al Doha coalition or within the Istanbul Council. The gathering also stressed that only Syrian citizens are the side that is entitled to find a solution out of the crisis without any foreign assistance. It expressed full support for the Geneva II conference, which the statement hoped would offer one such solution without foreign intervention. The gathering also stressed that the tribes and clans are standing with the Syrian Arab army in one trench to confront the conspiracy and triumph over it, and standing with the people behind their wise leadership, which is the only guarantee for the Syrian unity of land and people. The gathering presented a set of photos and videos that illustrate the crimes of the terrorist groups in Syria, which have targeted infrastructure, mosques, churches and factories, as well as schools, hospitals and power, communication, transport and water networks. On the ground, Syrian Arab army foiled an infiltration attempt by a group of terrorists that tried to enter from al Suwaqa in the old city of Aleppo into the surrounding secure areas, killing all the terrorists. Syrian Arab army also carried out several operations raiding the terrorist hideouts in the neighborhoods of Karmim Yassar, Qadi Askar and Salihin, killing many terrorists. Several terrorist hideouts were also destroyed, eliminating all terrorists and ammunition inside in the eastern countryside of Aleppo, including al Hidariye, Talit Ghali, Kifarnaha and al Khifse, in addition to the areas of Urm, Darit Azza, Jabal Barakat and Khan Shahoud. Syrian Arab army also killed many Many terrorists in the towns and villages of Aquarius, Kaskis, Jdeide, and the surrounding of the central prison of Aleppo, Mansoura, and Ar Rashidin, Khan al Asal, and others. Two Syrian workers have been injured in Tripoli in Lebanon when armed men attacked them. The Lebanese National Agency of Media said that the armed men attacked the two Syrian workers while they were passing through Abi Samra area in Tripoli trying to rob them, which made the two Syrians defend themselves but one of them was wounded by a bullet while the other was stabbed by a knife. The two were admitted to the hospital for treatment while the armed men fled. Welcome back. 
Iraqi army continued its operations to hunt down the terrorists in several areas, especially in the governorate of Al-Ambar. Iraqi security forces killed five terrorists from the so-called the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant, which is affiliated to Al-Qaeda, and arrested two others in Ramadi. In Fallujah, the Iraqi security forces killed a terrorist nicknamed as Abu Tufail al-Qalqazi, assistant of the so-called Mufti al-Mujahideen Shura Council in the city. The Iraqi security forces reopened the highway in Ambar, west of the country. They also opened roads for quick passage of truck drivers and fuel tanks to ensure they arrived to Ramadi and Fallujah. Meanwhile, a unit from the Customs Police killed two suicide bombers who were trying to attack the Customs Department of Tikrit in Salah al-Din Governorate. Iraqi police also thwarted a terrorist attack that targeted the houses of the citizens in the southern city of Dujail, south of Tikrit, killing three terrorists. As part of its policy to Jewish the Palestinian land, Israeli forces of occupation are planning to construct 272 settlements in the West Bank. The anti-settlement organization Peace Now said that the agreement and the project was gained on the eve of the departure of U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry from the region, adding that starting the construction might be very soon. Such plans by the Israeli occupation demonstrate the extent of its carelessness for the international law and for the calls to stop the settlement in order to resume the negotiations with the Palestinian side. The Israeli continuation with constructing settlements also show the Arab international complicity in covering up the continuous crimes committed by the occupation forces against the Palestinians. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani said that his country was among the leading states in combating terrorism and extremism. Chairing the first meeting of the governors, Rouhani said that Iran has always played a pioneering role in combating violence and extremism, adding that Iran was witnessing a relief vis-à-vis -vis external policy. He further underlined the necessity that the talks with 5 plus 1 group be based on a win-win principle, adding that the talks would have reached a deadlock had win-lose principle continued to prevail. Finally, the Christian Orthodox dominations in Russia today celebrated Christmas, which coincides with the 7th of January each year, according to the Eastern calendar. On this occasion, the Cathedral of Jesus Christ in Moscow held a religious mass headed by Patriarch Kirill of Moscow and or Russia, head of the Russian Orthodox Church, in the presence of more than 5,000 Russian worshippers. On his part, Russian President Vladimir Putin addressed a congratulation message to the Russian Orthodox Church commending its role in strongly raising the upcoming generation and the values of good in a way that reflects itself in society. Besides the Russian Orthodox Church, three more churches celebrate Christmas today, namely the Serbian, the Georgian, and the Church of Jerusalem. For this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Nadima Qassam, but after a short break. <laughs>